Let's start letting folks in. I don't think I'm a co-host, Catherine, because I'm not able to let folks in. I don't see that anybody in the waiting room yet. Okay, well, it looks like folks are coming in. We're going to begin um, in about two minutes. We'll let uh, everyone have a little bit extra time to come in here. Uh, this afternoon. Please feel free to say hello in the chat. Um, um, during this webinar, we're going to ask that you try to keep your um, self on mute until we get to the end. And if we um, ask folks to unmute during the question and answer, but please feel free to enter questions that you have in the chat um, while I'm speaking and we'll make sure to attend to those questions at the end as well. Okay, I think we are ready to begin. So uh, this is the second webinar for the Expand Massachusetts Stories grants and particularly the open track. Um, I am your presenter today. My name is Katherine Stevens. I'm the Director of Grants and Programs at Mass Humanities. Today's webinar is going to focus on um, budgets, creating the budget for your application. And I should also um, make sure that I thank our interpreters who are here today. Uh, Moran and uh, Gabriel, and uh, also my colleagues, Jen and Toya, who are helping with everything behind the scenes. Mass Humanities uh, creates opportunities for the people of Massachusetts to transform their lives and build a more equitable commonwealth through the humanities. And we do this through grants, which is um, what you are all here to hear about, through programs, partnerships, uh, with nonprofits around Massachusetts. Our work is made possible by the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Mass Cultural Council, and the generosity of our donors. Our Expand Massachusetts Stories initiative is made possible with support from the Barr Foundation. This is our agenda for today. As we talk about project budgets, I'm going to give a quick overview and orientation of the budget form. I'll talk about some key rules um, and some considerations when making your budgets. I'll go over the budget limits, that's line item uh, caps on any particular kinds of costs. And then I will talk about matching requirements and those are um, important for those of you applying through the open track. And I'll also talk about indirect costs. Then we'll finish up with completing the form and of course have time for questions. To get us started, I just want to highlight a few key things um, in an overview and orientation. So in your application, you have a field where you enter the amount you're requesting of Mass Humanities. So that's kind of the first place where you are putting the dollar amount you are requesting. 
And then of course, what we're gonna spend a lot of time looking at today is the budget template. So this is where basically you break out those costs in more detail, and you will also add um, and explain additional um, costs that you are covering for the project with um, other kinds of support. So that template is also in the application. Um, you click this blue area here, it will uh, download an Excel sheet to uh, the computer you are working on. The requirements for project budgets are in our grant guidelines. Um, we're gonna be going over a number of them today, but really your best resource, the place to go back to is always those grant guidelines and the requirements there, and also the list of um, costs that we do not fund. This slide is to orient us all to the budget template that is in the application. This is what should download to your computer when you click that template um, budget template link in the application. So I'll just do a quick orientation to the sheet that we're looking at right now. Um, you know, up here, we provide definitions for the budget um, and remind you of the matching requirements for open track projects. Um, those are our instructions that are at the top. The rows are clearly the cost categories. And um, these are kind of recommended categories and we do leave space for other categories that we haven't really listed or named here. And then we have your columns and it's helpful to think about these in little, uh, as little couplets as two, two columns to a group. The first are the columns related to the cost you're requesting Mass Humanities funds to cover. The second two in green is your cash cost share. And we'll explain a little bit more about what that means uh, in the webinar uh, later. Um, so those are, those are costs that you are covering uh, from the project. And then your in-kind cost share, those are in pink on the sheet. And again, we'll talk about that later in the webinar. The yellow totals up all of the rows, and then of course the whole project cost here. And then at the bottom, we provided some formulas to double check um, the matching requirements for the open track. That's your orientation to the whole sheet. There are some details that we'll talk about a little bit later when it comes to direct costs and indirect costs. Um, but broadly, you wanna make sure you know what each of the kind of column pairings are for. I'm gonna move on to key rules and considerations. The first is that the Excel budget you submit, so that form I just showed you, should reflect all project expenses during the grant period. So that is between your start date and your end dates. Some of you might be seeking funds for um, some, for work, uh, for projects that extend beyond the grant period. So maybe you are seeking funds for stage two of a three-year project. Um, you will want to make sure that you're your budget template really only covers that year two that you are seeking funds for. So nothing uh, before that and nothing um, after that. So just to be sure that all of those project expenses for the grant period are reflected on your budget. Do use the template that is provided in the application. Um, and also, if the total request on your completed budget template in Excel is different from that amount that you listed in the application in that uh, amount requested field, Mass Humanities will use the amount that's on your budget sheet and will update the form for you. So always double check to make sure that those are the same, the amount you request in the field on the application and then what the total you request in your template is, double check that. But if for any reason um, there's a discrepancy, Mass Humanities will use what is listed on the actual template in the budget sheet. Mass Humanities will award requests in full for Expand Massachusetts Stories grants. So what that means is that if you request $15,000 from Mass Humanities, we will either award $15,000 or not award funding. Right? So just make sure then that your budget aligns with your application narrative. So that costs that are in your budget clearly relate to work, uh, activities, or final deliverables that are explained in your narrative. I'm 
Going to go over what Mass Humanities Expand Massachusetts Stories grants cannot fund. This is the list that is in your um, in your grant guidelines, but I think it's helpful to repeat these here. And we cannot fund work undertaken or supplies purchased before or after the grant period. We can't fund profit making or fundraising projects, capital campaigns, or organizational strategic planning. Regrants to other organizations direct social service such as counseling, therapeutic, legal, or medical services. And we do not fund the creation of professional art or artistic performances, professional theater productions, the cost of entertainment uh, or alcohol. We don't fund ticket costs if the revenue from ticket sales goes to the applicant organization. We don't fund capital improvements, construction or restoration lobbying or advocacy projects for specific public policies or legislation, the promotion of particular political, religious, or ideological points of view, scholarships or prizes, or general operating costs outside of indirect project costs, which I will um, speak to later in the webinar. I'm going to move on to budget limits. These are line item. Uh, uh, related caps on certain kinds of costs. So we fund speaker stipends or honoraria up to $500 per speaker per event. For receptions, we fund food costs at $300 per project. We make a distinction between receptions that might be um, providing food at a celebratory event or an opening um, or uh, a speaker series we separate that out from food costs that are for program participants, pro that enable program participants to take part in a project such as a lunch at a teacher's institute or food for youth in an after school program. Those costs are allowed and we don't put a specific cap on them. We simply ask that they um, be reasonable for, um, for you to uh, you know, provide uh, what is needed. Um, for your project. We fund up to uh, $250 per person per day for lodging. Um, for travel costs, we uh, provide funding for reasonable travel costs for project personnel who are out of town. Um, if they are traveling, um, we rarely fund international travel, that is travel originating outside of Canada, Mexico, um, or the US territories and possessions. Equipment rental is encouraged. So if you're doing a project that involves um, recording equipment, for example, um, it's encouraged to rent that equipment, um, but we can fund up to $1,000 for the purchase of uh, that equipment. And we use the phrase reusable equipment because that, um, that designates that you are purchasing something that you will continue to use um, even after the project is complete. Those are the limits, um, and we've uh, we think reduced some of those limits from past uh, past uh, budget requirements. We've tried to make them simpler. Um, I'm going to move on to matching and indirect costs. So uh, this is the full set of um, requirements uh, for matching costs, and I'm going to go over these in general and then get into some of the specifics. Expand Massachusetts Stories open track grants, if you're applying in the open track, require a one-to-one -one match. Um, that phrase one-to-one -one match means that Mass Humanities funding can only cover up to half of your open tracks uh, total project costs. So the rest of the costs of your project need to come from other sources. Uh, those costs that are covered by other sources are generally called your cost share. Um, and there are two different kinds of cost shares, depending on how that support is given. There's the cash share and there's the in-kind share. And if you remember, cash share is the green and in-kind share is the pink. And your cash match needs to be at least 10% of the uh, cost share um, that you are providing. The, sorry, 10% of the, um, amount you are requesting of mass humanities. 
So just to take a look at the sheet, um, this provides, you know, this shows a one-to-one a -one match. So here we see $40,000 as the total project costs, um, and then $20,000 being requested of Mass Humanities. So as you can see, the total project costs are double the request of Mass Humanities. Um, and that is, you know, the minimum that's required. You are welcome to have total project costs that are more than a one-to-one -one match, um, but this is the, the minimum requirement. Take an, just another closer look at that and to take a look at the, the sheet itself. Um, again, here is your total project cost. Here's your mass humanities request. And as we said, we do try to provide a formula at the bottom that will double check to make sure that this number is at least double uh, the request for mass humanities to make sure that you are making that one-to-one -one match requirement. Let's talk about that cash share requirement since it also has a percentage involved in it. And let's define what that cash share is a little bit. So cash share support is when money, actual money changes hands. So when your organization pays for things like work, supplies, external venue rentals, travel costs or fees, um, that cash share, the non-mass humanities costs that you are covering, um, that, uh, those cash costs can come from your organization's operating budget. Um, it could come from ticket sales. Uh, if there are ticket sales for an event you are doing, it can come from registration fees for events that you do. It can also come from other funding sources, so uh, grants that you receive. Here's an, you know, an example of a common cash cost share source. So if your local community foundation awards uh, $2,500 to your project and you are using those funds to pay a web developer, that is um, a cash cost share and you would be entering that in uh, the columns marked uh, the top in green on the sheet. So that cash match, that cash cost share needs to be at least 10%. Um, of your mass humanities request, right? So uh, if you request $20,000 of mass humanities, then your cash share would need to be uh, at least, and everyone can do a little mental math here. And if you feel brave, feel free to enter it in the chat. Uh, cash needs to be at least $2,000, right? So that is the minimum. Uh, your cash share can be more than that. Uh, if that is, can be more than 10%, it can be 50%, it can be 100%. Um, but if you are requesting this maximum amount of mass humanities, that means your cash share will need to be um, at least $2,000, right? And you can see that on the, the sample we have here, the cash cost share is $2,000, the request to mass humanities is $20,000, and the formula is responding, yes, that that, that match is there. Let's also talk about in-kind share. This is the other kind of um, cash share, or sorry, cost share that you can be providing uh, for your project. So in-kind support is a cash-less donation. Um, it includes things like free use of facilities, supplies that are donated to your project, and volunteer time. So in your budget, you'll be asked to determine the cash value of those donations. So here's again an example of what that might look like. If a local art center, and that's not your organization, so somebody who's not your organization, donates a theater for your film screening, you can calculate that donation based on their usual rental rate. Say it's $150 an hour. So that would go into, your, into the columns um, that are pink at the top on the sheet, and you would enter that as part of your in-kind cost share. So we're taking a look back at the sheet. Um, so if your cash match needs to be at least 10% of the match, um, that means up to 90%, right, can be that in-kind um, in kind share, right? So here it's $18,000 in the in-kind column. But again, those are the minimum requirements. Um, you could have a different formula, but it needs to be at the very least 10% cash and 90% in-kind.
We're going to move on to indirect costs. And um, we'll say a little bit about what this is if you're not familiar with them, and then talk a little bit about how we calculate that, or how you will be calculating it on the sheet. So Mass Humanities funds may be used to cover a portion of indirect costs. Indirect costs broadly are defined as, um, are often called overhead or operating costs. So these are costs that it's hard to determine you know, exactly that they are going directly to your project, but they are necessary to do things like keep the lights on in a building where you work um, or um, you know, manage financial transactions, cover insurance all the kinds of costs um, of, of keeping your work going that cannot be directly tied to the project. Um, you are not required to request uh, funds for indirect costs. I just wanna be clear about that. Um, for some organizations, it's very important to be able to do that in any grant that they apply for. Um, but if that is not something that um, is of use to your organizations, you can leave this calculation out um, and simply not request indirect costs. But obviously, if it matters to your organization, um, you, can, you can request a portion of indirect costs. So you calculate that portion of, uh, of indirect costs from your total direct project costs. So if your total direct project costs, those are all the costs that you're listing in those um, regular cost line items, things like project directors and um, moderators, speakers, you know, uh, stipends for participants, all of those things. When you total those up, you can then take 10% of that total and that 10% becomes your indirect cost you're able to claim. So here's an example. Um, if an organization seeks $5,000 for direct costs, like renting a space that it doesn't own, paying speakers um, and printing flyers, We'll then use a 10% rate to calculate its indirect cost that it's going to claim as $500. So that gives that indirect plus direct cost will give us the total funding request for the organization, which will be, again, anyone is happy to do uh, the math and enter it into the chat. Right, it's uh, $5,500. So that becomes the total funding request. So that's the amount that should be in the amount requested field. Uh, in the application form. And that's a total that will be produced on the budget sheet and the budget template. So let's just take a look back at the budget template to kind of connect everything I just said with what the template looks like. So these, right, everything listed here is the direct project costs, right, requested of mass humanities. They total up to this line here, right? This direct cost line is the total. And then 10%, right, is calculated here. And that brings us to the total request. So uh, I think I just wanna give this little hint to everybody, uh, this tip. If, you're, if you are requesting the uh, highest total amount you can request for Mass Humanities for this grant, which is $20,000, and you do want to claim those indirect costs, you have to do a little calculation to figure out you know, exactly what the total direct costs needs to be such that when you add the indirect cost, you get $20,000. And we've done that calculation here in the webinar for you so you're aware of what it is. So if you want to request um, $20,000 of Mass Humanities, it means you're, and you want to include indirect costs, your total direct costs needs to equal, and the number is a, a little bit specific, uh, $18,181. And then it makes your total indirect cost 18,000, oh, sorry, 1,819. And you, you round, you can round up to the nearest whole number here. So when you add those together, you get $20,000 after your total request. I am happy to share the math secrets in the Q and A for doing this calculation. Typically, you know, if you're if you're not aiming to to land with a, a single number for the total direct cost, you would just add up your so your total request. Um, if you're not looking to end with a specific number and your total request, rather you would simply enter in your direct cost, right, and calculating your indirect and and. and and getting your total that way, that's totally fine. That's a very normal way to do a budget. 
Um, but if you're trying to land at a specific number for total requests, what you do need to do, um, there's a little bit of algebra involved and, and I can speak to that if desired. All of that said, I'm going to end with just some notes on completing the budget form. So I'd say the first and most important thing to do is of course to download that template to your computer and save a copy of it. Make sure that you complete your answers on the saved copy and upload the saved copy to the application. Um, I think we have all been there when we have downloaded something um, entered our answers on it and forgotten to save. Uh, it happens to the best of us. So this is just a little reminder to try to um, make sure that that uh, happens to, to fewer of us for this application. Uh, when you open the template, you'll notice that there is an example in gray where we show you know, how you will fill it out. You enter your, um, your requested amounts and your explanations. Uh, so as you can see, you enter the requested amount in one uh, of the column pairs, and then you give an explanation in the next side of the column pair. Um, so here, $600 is the requested amount, and the explanation is that it's $300 honoraria for two speakers. In the cash cost share columns, we ask that you provide information about the source uh, of the funds, um, and if those funds are in hand or, or pending if you're not yet sure whether you have them. So in this case, we have um, honoraria for four community panelists. Um, it is in hand, meaning it's in the organization's operating budget already. Um, if this were a um, to be covered by a grant that you have not yet received, you would enter uh, pending um, and name, if possible, the um, the organization that you are applying uh, to the grant for. Right? So that's how you will explain your cash cost share. Um, and of course, over here in in-kind, you're explaining how you're making the calculation for that in-kind cost. So that concludes our walkthrough of the budget uh, and the budget template. I am happy to take some questions now and um, I think I will stop the screen share for a bit, and, but if I need to put it back up to show the template, I'll, I'll do that. So um, I think my colleague Jen might read off some questions that have come through. Hi, I've been um, trying to answer some of the questions in the chat, uh, but for those who haven't been following the chat, uh, it would be nice to ask those aloud for response. Um, the first one was, do you have to have the cash share in hand when you apply or can you be in the process of applying for additional support? Um, you can be in the process of applying for additional support. You just need to let us know uh, what which it is uh, in the template. And then someone did ask um, if, if they could use grant funds for exhibition expenses related to sharing the stories gathered and interpreted. Um, yes, yeah, so you can use the funds to, you know, create exhibit panels, um, any, anything related to uh, sharing and interpreting the stories um, in a public setting. Mm -hmm. And then someone uh, in the chat was asking if they could claim the use of their own rented space as mm -hmm. um, used for an exhibit as part of the match, um, mm -hmm. or if that would be considered an indirect cost. Um, that is something that um, you cannot claim as an indirect cost. It's essentially something you already own. Um, and so um, it doesn't get claimed uh, as, a, as part of the cost share. And then once the grant is awarded, what do you do if you have new costs or the actual costs are way more or less than it was budgeted? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, so if you're awarded a grant, we um, do have a process for making changes to your budget plans. Um, and so if there are changes above a certain threshold amount, which I believe is uh, $2,000, um, or adding any major uh, cost um, line item that wasn't already in the budget, we ask that you check in with us and let us know about the change so that we can make sure that um, it aligns with all the requirements. So that's that's typically the process if you are awarded a grant. 
and we're caught up with the chat. Great, excellent. So I'm happy to take any questions that haven't been asked in the chat. Um, you can use the raise hand function. Uh, and that makes it easier for me to find you. It looks like uh, Paul has a question. <clears throat> yeah, where would you put the uh, cost of uh, the fiscal sponsor? Say, mm -hmm. you have a fiscal sponsor, it's, uh, you know, they, they're going to take 5%. So where, where do you put that into it? Great. Uh, line B is where you put, um, so line B is generally considered like staff at the organization that is applying and we fold fiscal sponsors into that. So if there's a fiscal sponsor fee, you put it in um, row, it's row B, I believe on the application budget template. Thank you. Welcome. Um, it looks like I see a question from Chandra or Chandra. Yes, hi. If um, we're using, professional services of somebody who is donating their services, can you use that uh, amount for your cost share? Absolutely, yes. Um, if there is a professional and they have a typical rate that they charge, but they are donating their time for free, um, ask them what their rate is. Um, it's great, and, you know, document it. And then, um, you know, if you're awarded the grant, you would, you know, be keeping those documents. And so for the budget template, um, estimate you know what that rate will be and enter it in the template as a as a in kind uh, cost share. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I see uh, Julia. Hi. So I'm a faculty member at um, Northeastern. We have a longstanding partnership with um, a nonprofit called the Dominican Development Center, mm -hmm. and. Um, both the university has um, overhead costs mm -hmm. and the organization has overhead operational costs. And I'm wondering how that might factor into how we sort of spell out budgetary needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll some way depend on who the applicant is. Um, you know, I think we can only cover indirect costs for, um, you know, as a portion of direct costs, right? That's, that's how it is. Um, Know how we make that calculation, you would be welcome to figure out if there's a way to feel like you're equitably dividing that among the two parties, depending on who the applicant is. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I see Jim with a hand up. Oh, I think you're on mute, Jim. Thank you. Um, so I've heard that in kind matching uh, volunteer time can mm -hmm. be. Uh, added at uh, $30 an hour. Um, is uh, Does that mean the volunteers have to be paid that, or is that just something, um, you know, kind of a maximum that you can use to get the in-kind um, hours? It's not a maximum, um, and it really depends on the volunteer work that's being done. That's kind of the base rate, right? So for any volunteer work, um, but if someone is volunteering and it's a particular skill that they're volunteering, um, then you could be paying um, a higher rate depending on what they would typically charge or what you would typically provide if it was a paid service. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think I see a hand up again from uh, yeah. For me, mm -hmm. um, I the, Jim's question just made gave me a question. So let's just say we do use somebody's donated time for the project, mm -hmm. and that person, because she's donated it, does not expect to be paid. Does that money go into just go into our treasury? Uh, so if they're donating their time, essentially no money changes hands. Right? So that's that's the difference between the um, cash share and the in-kind share. So in the oh, in-kind okay. share, since you know money is moving, right? Someone's right, it's an in-kind share. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
feel like I should ask a question, which is on a scale of one to 10, how confident does everyone feel about completing their budget template? Feel free to put a number in the chat. I'm very glad that folks feel above a five. That's great. Um, it's not as intimidating as it looks once you sort of get oriented um, and have a handle on it. And, um, you know, uh, feel free to reach out if you're really not sure about something um, when, you, when you start filling it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, you know, look at my uh, timer and give us one more minute to make sure that there isn't a question that is um, kind of just below the surface. And then if we pass that minute um, with no questions, we'll conclude for the day. Oh, uh, so it looks like Robert has a question. Um, Robert, you have your hand up? Yeah, I'm not hearing the question from Robert. And I see a question. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. Is it possible to put up the slide with the contact information? There were three or four people's names and email address and such. Mm -hmm. It went by pretty fast yesterday. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And, you know, I think I believe that that is not that slide isn't in this particular presentation, but my colleagues have put that information in the chat and you can also find those links. That slide is um, directly from our grant guidelines. So um, we can put the grant guidelines link in the chat. And once you have that, you can find all of those links with the contact information. Um, and that's probably the easiest way to, to book those appointments. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I see a question, um, would there be, need to be a tangible deliverable but could this be put towards a curator's time for say processing archival materials, which will then be made available to the public? I say the answer to that is if that time spent processing the archival materials is specific to the project, right? It is the, it is the materials that are going to contribute to um, the exhibit, right? Like an exhibit or any kind of public sharing. And the processing is for the purpose of that final deliverable, that exhibit or that event then yes, that could be claimed as a direct cost. If it is processing broadly, um, simply to have it processed, uh, I think that is probably not exactly a direct cost. Um, but I would be happy to check in about that to make sure I understand the question and the work in the project. And it looks like I see a, I see a hand from Phil. Yes, thank you. Uh, I apologize if you covered this yesterday. I, I wasn't able to attend and, and um, or look at the video. So if it was covered, just let me know. Um, to what extent is the budget that that we request a factor in the competitive aspect of the program? I would say that it is um, it is part of a holistic evaluation of the application. Um, and so the budget demonstrates uh, your planning um, and your preparation. So that's really a, a, where I think it um, comes into any kind of evaluation. But in terms of how much you request, um, we don't make a determination um, essentially based on that as a discrete number. It's really, is what's requested, does it align with the whole project narrative, right? Does it demonstrate planning? Um, um, and attention to the cost of the project. Great, thanks so much. You're welcome. Um, I've seen uh, Carla with a hand up. Um, and I also see a question about uh, posting uh, slides. So I know we post the videos and we are working on uh, making the slides easily accessible to folks as well. Um, but if you have another question, Carla, yeah. please feel free to ask it. Uh, no, that was it. Great, thank you. And I see a hand from Janice as well.
Yes, you can feel free to unmute and ask your question. <laughs> um, is there a guideline for how much humanities advisors should be paid? It varies uh, widely depending on the advisor, their role, how much time they're spending on the project, um, and you know whether they, um, you know, what what kinds of uh, maybe consulting uh, fees they typically charge um, versus whether they donate their time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to give us another minute since we got a lot of questions out of that last minute. Um, I see, I see a new hand up. Yeah, please feel free to unmute. Mm -hmm. My question is, how many, how, how competitive is this grant? Like, how many applications do you normally, like the funding rate, basically? The, mm -hmm. How many applications and how many gets granted? Yeah, that's generally? a great question. Um, you know, it does uh, change year to year. I, I, I think it, um, you know, we will likely be awarding, I believe it is um, probably around 20, uh, 20 awards this year um through the open track and um you know total applicants are typically um you know around 50 40 to 50 applicants it, it does vary um and uh you know i think we have about 45 people attending the the webinar so that kind of gives you a sense of how many people might be applying I have another question. <laughs> sure. Sorry. Um, is, is it is it possible in in terms of a, a public exhibit, for example, we're thinking of having stories that can be loaded onto our website and be exhibited that way, is as opposed to like a performance. You know, um, is that is that an okay normal thing to do? Absolutely. Yeah. So okay. you, you know, you determine the venue and, and whether digital makes more sense for your audience and what you're trying to achieve with the project versus in person. And I think for digital projects, um, you're always thinking about um, what will bring someone to that digital space, either events that you might do or outreach that you might do if events uh, don't work for your project. Thank you. I'm going to give us um, just another 30 seconds. Okay. Um, well, thank you all for your questions. Thank you uh, to our interpreters and thank you to my colleagues, Jen and Toya for helping us out um, uh, on, the, on the technical side of the webinar. Um, I look forward to reading all of your applications. I'm sure you will all have um, really thoughtful uh, and excellent budgets. Um, and um, as always, please feel free to reach out if you have questions. 
have a great afternoon.